Let me show you how to create a gritty portrait look, also known as the Dragon effect inside Luminar Neo. It's pretty easy to do, let me show you how. Now this particular effect is kind of like the anti-beauty edit. So it works really well with elderly gentlemen. It can work well for sports stars as well, but I wouldn't recommend it for people that you are trying to flatter. You guys voted for this particular edit that I shared on Instagram. And so that's the one that we're gonna work on. But I gotta be honest, we're probably not going to replicate that exactly. And that's okay. Every time I work on an edit, it's a new creation. I'm not following an exact recipe. I'm going by feel, I'm going for what looks good to my eye on that particular day, and that's okay. So the first thing that we want to do is be adding some contrast into our photo. So I'm gonna add smart contrast as my starting point. We wanna make sure that the highlights are protected, so I'm gonna grab that highlight slider and bring that down. Now already you can see that the colors are starting to get a little funky on us, but I'm not too worried about that because part of the effect will be that we're going to desaturate the photo slightly. So any color anomalies, they're gonna be minimized as we reduce that saturation. Part of the effect is accentuating sharpness, and so a good starting point is to actually bump your sharpness up inside the Develop Raw tool. So this is our before and our after. Okay, we're heading in the right direction. Now let's add some details. Now you might think that adding structure would be a really good thing to do, but as you can see, if I boost the structure up to 100, so really intense, and we look at the before and after, you'll notice that it's not actually adding structure to his face. And that is on purpose. The Skylum developers thought that structure is not really want something that you want to add to somebody's skin. You don't want to add all that crunchy detail. And so this is not the tool for us on this occasion. So instead, we're gonna jump into the details section here and that's gonna allow us to do something very similar. To start with, I'm just gonna push these sliders all the way up so you can see exactly what they do. That's the small details, it's a little crunchy. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that, but the medium details, that's more the effect I'm after. And then the large details, let's see what that's doing before and after. Okay, that's pretty useful as well. So what I'd like to do is actually have a combination of all of these effects. So a little bit of the small details perhaps, a lot of the medium and some of the large. Now this is over the top at the moment, before and after, it is too much. So what I'm gonna do is grab my mask, grab my brush and then paint this effect in and just build it up. So I'm gonna go with, oh, let's go with 50% to start with, and I'm just gonna do a pass over the face and hand as a starting point. Okay, before and after, that's pretty good. I'm gonna bring the size down and the strength down as well, because what I'd like to do is just another pass over some key areas. So over the eyes again, and maybe a little touch on the hands before and after. For the next step, we wanna add a bit more drama to the face here, and we have the perfect tool inside Luminar Neo, and that is the dramatic tool. So watch this, as I push the amount up, look at all of that detail and drama that's added. Yeah, we've got completely bleached out with the default settings, not a problem, we're gonna fine tune this. So first of all, what I'd like to do is show you with the local contrast, if I boost that up or bring it down, you can add in that contrast, but it's up to you how much of those details you want to sort of bring back with this tool. I'm gonna to leave that quite high for this one, and don't worry, I'm not gonna go as excessive as 100, but what I like to do is always set my tools pretty high with the amount, and then it's really clear to see the changes that you're making as you go. Once you've got the tool set up how you want, you can then come in and just reduce the overall amount. So you can see that we were desaturated originally based on how the tool comes as default. Here we grab the saturation slider and we can boost that saturation back up so that we're starting to get the effect but not lose the color. And now I'm kind of happy with how that effect is set up. I just want to grab the amount slider and start to play with that and toggle it to a point where I feel like I'm happy. You know, we don't need too much of this, maybe 39% before and after. Yep, pretty good. We also have the ability, if we want to, to say, go a bit more heavy handed with it and then use the brush and paint the effect in, in more specific areas, a little bit like we did last time. So we can just paint more over the face and the hand because as it was going over the arm here, it was bringing out all of that nasty hair detail. This guy's probably got a cat or something. I find those hairs pretty distracting, so I don't wanna draw attention to them if I can help it. 
Okay, let's look at where we came from and where we've got to before and after. And you could go with this as your technique, but if you want to level it up even further with a little more control, we're gonna do some dodging and burning. Now, I've explained in many videos why I don't think using the dedicated dodge and burn tool is a good idea, so I won't go over it here. Just trust me on this one for going for our burning effect, which is to darken things down. We just wanna grab the curves and drop that down. If you feel like the shadows are getting too dark in certain places, put a point on the bottom side of the curve and then just lift that up. You can see that how that is affecting those shadows. So we can just protect them by lifting that up close to where that 45 degree line is, and that's gonna keep those shadows pretty much intact as they were. And now we can just use our masking brush to paint this effect in as if we're painting in a burn effect. So this time I like to set my strength even lower, somewhere around 20% will be fine. And then as I click and start painting, I'm doing not a lot because I'm in a raise mode. That's not what I want. So if that happens, you do your mask wrong, no problem. Just come down here to the mask actions and we can clear the mask and start again. So I'll go to the brush and I'm just gonna paint in where I want to darken down. And so when I'm doing this kind of painting, what I'm doing is just thinking about the three-dimensional form of the character, of the person. If there are certain areas that are just a little bit too bright, I just darken them down. Dodge and burn is one of those techniques that can take a long, long time to really master. And I have done some dedicated tutorials on it on my channel already. So if you want to learn more, just search dodge and burn on my channel and you'll find those videos. But for now, just know that I'm just trying to accentuate the three-dimensional form of the character. That's one component of it. And then if there's areas like his hand that are just a little bit too bright compared to the rest of it, I just darken that down. And because this effect is about making people look a bit more gritty and grungy and accentuating all of the character lines that we have here. I'm just gonna go over the forehead lines there. And at any point we can just come over to the eye on the tool itself and just toggle that to see where we came from. And if we close it down, we can just jump into the edit stack and look at the before and after, before and after. And I'm not too concerned about going over the background at the moment. I can deal to that afterwards if I need to. Okay, now we're going to do the dodge effect, which is brightening up. So you could either just grab your exposure and punch that up if you want, but you can see that we're actually bleaching out some of those pixels there. That's too much. Using the curves actually allows us to brighten things up. And in the same way that we were protecting the shadows before, we can put a point to the right this time and protect the highlights so that they don't get blown out. And then wherever we set this curve to, we know that it doesn't matter how much we paint over the mask, things will never get brighter than what we have here at the moment. So I'm just gonna to go to my masking again, go to my brush, and as soon as I click anywhere on the photo like that, we've activated the mask, and now we see nothing apart from where I'm going to start painting. So I'm gonna go down the bridge of the nose, basically areas where I want to bring out form, just make him kind of pop out just a little bit more. And I think a key area is most definitely the eyes. We really wanna draw attention to those eyes. So I'm gonna go around with several passes underneath the iris, and that's a really nice way just to bring out attention in the eyes, before and after, before and after. Doing a good dodge and burn can actually take a really long time to get it looking the way you want it to. So this is a really rough and ready demonstration at the moment, but it's just kind of giving you an idea. So I might want to just brighten up some of that detail in the ear because that was getting lost before. And if we focus on that before and after, you can see that's just brought out a bit of life over there. And you can see that the eye on the right hand side is receiving less light than the one on the left. And so this does just look a little bit too dark in comparison. I can't make it any brighter because I've already gone over that eye several times. So what I need to do is create a new version of develop and just focus on the eye only. Just bring that level up. I wanna bring up the shadows this time. You can see that I'm putting a point down here on the left-hand side, which represents the shadows. Boost that up. And uh, once I'm happy with the sort of look of that eye, I can just come in and paint that back in. If I wanted to, I could do the painting of the mask first and then make those adjustments. That is a completely feasible way to do that as well. 
And now I'm just painting this in until I feel like the eye on the right hand side kind of matches the brightness level of the one on the left. And you'll notice that I'm not really going over the whites of the eyes, it's more the iris that is uh, of concern to me before and after. And I may even just bring a little bit more detail around the eye as well. It's pretty dark in and around that socket as well. Because I want to draw attention to our character here, I'm gonna use a vignette and I'm gonna do it pretty heavy handed this time. I really wanna dull down that white background around him. So let's crank that amount pretty high and let's feather that so that it's a nice smooth transition towards the center of the frame. And we can even choose the subject so that we're not confined by the center of the frame. We can actually choose our own center of the vignette. So perhaps on the center of his nose there might be a nice transition point. And now if we've got that set up the way we want, what we can do is just grab that amount slider again and just sort of ease that back where we were a little happier with it before and after. As a finishing touch, I'm just gonna bring in a bit more detail with Accent AI. You can see that if I boost this all the way to 100, it's bringing back all of that information there. We don't wanna do that, but you know, a little bit may help us out. So I'll just bump in a little bit of that. I'm also gonna work with the overall contrast of the photo. So I like to work with curves. Um, a basic principle with curves is if you drop down the point on the left-hand side, that's gonna darken the shadows, put a point on the right-hand side and lift it up, that's gonna boost the highlights. As you can see now, we have a very over the top contrast going on with this photo, but using that principle, we can move these to fine tune the look to get it exactly how we want. You know, a little S curve there goes a long way. And if we feel like we're losing too much detail in the shadows, one little thing I like to do is just lift that black point up and that just gives us a softer black point before and after. It's not a true black now, it's a gray. If those highlights are just getting a little too bright as well, we can just bring that down as well. And as a final step, I like to add a bit of color grading. I always do that as my last thing I do. An easy way to kind of get a feel for the different color grades is just to open up this tool and then just mouse over the different color grades and observe your photo, see how it changes as you put on different ones. And there's many that I like. This Tokyo looks really nice. Monterey looks great. Um, yeah, I really like all of these. So it's entirely up to you which kind of color grade you go for. One particular toning that I really like is Long Beach inside the cinematic toning. And I'll often use that one, which isn't a bad idea to come back to the same kind of color grade so that your work starts to get a more consistent look. So we have a couple of options inside the actual color grading itself. You have the amount slider, as I've said before, it's always good to push that all the way up while you're fine tuning things. And then it's easy to see what the other sliders are doing. So I may just keep that contrast fairly low for this one. And then you can see that we have the ability to work with the saturation. I quite like a desaturated look for these kind of gritty portraits. So I'm gonna bring away some of the color there and then I'm just gonna bring the amount back to a place where I feel like it's a nice subtle addition. And now let's have a look where we came from and where we got to. You can see we've created a really extreme, crunchy kind of portrait. You know, it might not be your cup of tea. Let me just show you a technique we can use if we think, you know what, we've gone too far with this look. You know, let's kind of go halfway between the two. How would we do that? Well, it's actually really easy. What we can do is come over to the layers panel here, right click, and I'm gonna duplicate this layer. And now with this version on top that includes all the edits that we've created already, we're just gonna throw all of those edits away. That is gonna give us our original photo sat on top of what we created underneath. And now all we need to do is with this layer selected, come over to the layer properties and we can reduce the opacity. And you can see that that gives us the ability to fade the amount of the effect that we created versus the original. And so now what we can do is say, you know what, I went way overboard with what I did there. Let's kind of go about half and half, I don't know, something like that. And then again, we can look at the before and after, before and after, and we have a more tamed version of this gritty, grungy portrait effect. So that kind of processing is known as the Dragon effect after a Polish photographer. If there are other techniques and effects that you're interested in learning, why don't you hit me up in the comments and I'll see if I can create a video for you showing how to create that technique. Thanks for watching. In the meantime, why don't you check out that video right there that the mighty YouTube algorithm thinks you might enjoy. I'll see you over there.